So when it comes to graphic design and layout specifically, one key principle we should always consider is alignment. Now alignment is how we make sense of a design, how we can create order, structure, and suggest relationships between visual elements, which can all lead to a clear sense of visual hierarchy in our design, which is something we should always be striving for. When we design a poster or anything for that matter, we should always be thinking about alignment. Now, one of the key ways to focus on alignment and help with alignment in our design is to use grids. Starting with a blank canvas can often be bewildering, but if we start with a grid, it can help give us a framework to help lay out our visual elements. So if you sometimes struggle with your design and want more ideas and inspiration, then this may be the video for you. This video is going to be really important for those of you who want to improve on your layouts and learn about grids and how you can use them in your design. In this video, I'm going to discuss grids and the various grids you can consider using in the context of poster design. But these grids can also be used in any layout design you wish to create. So let's get into it. So what is a grid? Well, in design, a grid is an underlying structure that can be used to align and contain visual elements. Most often, grids are invisible frameworks a design can be based, but in some instances, a grid can be part of a visual design. Traditionally, grids have been used extensively for print work in magazines, posters, and books. Though today, it's very common to use a grid in web design, type design, logo design, and app design. So why are grids so important? Well, there are lots of reasons why grids are beneficial and why a designer will choose to use one. Ultimately, grids help solve layout problems. When it comes to layout design, a grid can establish a solid foundation to work from, which can help create order, structure, and establish consistency in a layout. A grid can help break a page into sections to contain and align visual elements, which can help develop relationships between elements, which leads to more structured and pleasing layouts. So what are the different types of grids? Well, there are a variety of grid systems you can consider in your design which all serve different purposes. Some of the classic grids that are commonly used in design are column grids, modular grids, hierarchical grids, and baseline grids. However, there are some alternative grids one can consider such as axial grids, diagonal grids, and radial grids. So one of the most common grids to use in design is the column grid. The column grid is one of the most simple and practical grid systems. A column grid separates a page into vertical zones, and typically columns are contained in a margin, which is the space around the outside of a page. Depending on the amount of information intended for a design, a column grid can vary from two to several columns. In a column grid, columns can sit seamlessly together, or you can add a gutter. A gutter is a space between the columns, which can be customized to increase or decrease the space between contents inside a column. This can help add breathing space to your design for a cleaner appearance. A column grid can easily divide your page into clear sections, in which you can assign content or align type or images. Here are some examples of poster designs that use column grids. The column grid is especially practical when dealing with large amounts of type as a designer can flow the type from one column to the next and maintain a consistent paragraph width. Content looks great when aligned in columns and it gives content a clear sense of structure. Achieving visual hierarchy is easily done using a column grid because the flow from left to right is clear and they do help section off various visual elements. Column grids are commonly used in type heavy designs such as magazines, newspapers and websites to organize content so it is easier to read. Though column grids can also be used effectively in poster design. Another common grid used in design is the modular grid. Now the modular grid builds on top of the column grid with the addition of horizontal rows. The rows are created with what are referred to as flow lines which create horizontal gutters. Where the column grid divides a page into zones and sections, the modular grid divides a page into multiple squares or rectangles. These squares and rectangles are called modules, and the gutters between help add breathing space between contents contained or aligned to modules. 
Depending on the amount of information intended for a design, a modular grid can vary from a few modules to many. When using the modular grid, content can be placed into or aligned to a module, though when multiple modules are assigned or grouped for a specific area of content, this is called a spatial zone. So here are some examples of poster design that use modular grids. Content can look really neat and considered when aligned across multiple modules, and it gives content a clear sense of structure. Because modular grids create many areas, this helps solve a problem of organization and can encourage a designer to place content in more alternative ways, leading to more compelling and dynamic compositions. Because of this versatility, modular grids are particularly popular in poster design. Another common grid used in design is the hierarchical grid, where the column and modular grid will typically present a neutral structure of repeated modules and columns of the same proportion, the hierarchical grid will typically include modules of various proportions to outline order and priority and establish a clear primary hook or focal point. Even though it's possible to use both a column and modular grid to establish a clear visual hierarchy, the hierarchical grid is used for the sole purpose of establishing a very clear visual hierarchy. A typical hierarchical grid can include a column or modular grid base that contain additional areas which can cross and overlap to establish a focal point with supportive elements. Here are some examples of posters that use hierarchical grids. Hierarchical grids can be used in any media where you want to establish a very clear hierarchy. Hierarchical grids are particularly popular in poster design because of the nature of the media. There will always be a primary hook or focal point required for a poster to capture the attention first, so a hierarchical grid can help establish a visual hierarchy clearly in a poster design. Content can look really impactful when based on a hierarchical grid, as it gives content a clear sense of visual hierarchy. So another common grid used in design is the baseline grid. Now the baseline grid is made up of a series of horizontal lines that typically fills the entire page, just like a page from a notepad that can be adjusted. The baseline grid is not commonly used to structure or align image content like the previous grids, but more so to manage type and define lines where type can sit. Here we see some examples of poster designs that use a baseline grid. Now baseline grids are great to achieve consistency with type. They create a vertical rhythm throughout a document and set a place to anchor type so it's not placed arbitrarily. Baseline grids can also be used to establish clear rows which can be clear anchors for type and compartmentalizing your page. Type can look really neat and considered when aligned to a baseline. It can give a composition a really professional result. Baseline grids are common in design that include a lot of type, such as in magazine and brochure design, but can also be used in poster design with lots of type elements. So those are some of the common grids designers will use, but there are some other grids to consider using for more alternative layout approaches. The first to consider is the axial grid. Now, unlike the previous grid systems, the axial grid is free from technical columns and modules and encourages a more free and simple layout. An axial grid consists of a distinct axis line running along or through a system. This axis line can be horizontal, vertical, or tilted in different directions and will typically divide a composition into two distinct zones, where text and image can then be placed or aligned on either side of the axis line. Here are some examples of poster designs that use an axial grid. Axial grids are more custom and are not easily generated in software such as Photoshop, InDesign, or Illustrator. So when working with an axial grid, one will typically have to create this themselves. The axis line can exist anywhere in a system, which can create a symmetrical or asymmetrical composition. An axial grid is good at drawing and leading your eye because it creates very high contrast. Because of their simplicity, content can look really striking and edgy when aligned to an axial grid. Axial grids tend to be quite dramatic and are not particularly common in design that has a lot of content and type, such as magazines and websites. However, they can be used to great effect in more impactful designs like posters, leaflets and flyers, where you want to capture more energy and movement and to lead the eye in more unconventional directions. Another alternative grid system to consider is the diagonal grid. So diagonal grids are column, modular or hierarchical grids placed on a diagonal rather than a vertical and are used to create more edgy and alternative layouts. 
In essence, diagonal grids are a little like axial grids, where they can suggest a clear direction and movement of content, however tend to be more complex, sometimes using multiple and contrasting directions, and include more visual content. Here are some examples of poster designs that use diagonal grids. Like the axial grid, diagonal grids are more custom and are not easily generated in software like Photoshop, InDesign or Illustrator. When working with a diagonal grid, one will typically have to create this themselves. And like the axial grid, diagonal grids can be used to great effect when you want to add a bit of flair to your layout to capture more energy, movement and lead the eye in more unconventional directions. So the last alternative grid system to consider is the radial grid. Now unlike all the previous grid systems that tend to be rigid in their approach, the radial grid offers a far more organic alternative. Where other grid systems flow vertically, horizontally or diagonally, the radial grid revolves around a central point, pulsating and emitting outwards. Here are some examples of poster designs that use a radial grid. Visual elements aligned to a radial grid tend to gravitate around or emit from a central point of focus, which can stem from anywhere in a composition. Depending on the nature of the design, the eye is either drawn, pushed out or moved around. Like the axial and diagonal grids, radial grids are more custom and are not easily generated in creative software. When working with a radial grid, one will typically have to create this themselves to base their layout on. Content can look really charming when aligned to a radial grid and if managed well, can have pleasing results. Now radial grids tend to be more conceptual and are notably used when a designer wants to make a statement, be more playful or when the idea of using a radial grid is significant. Radial grids can be quite impactful in a poster design when you want to capture more energy and movement and lead the eye in more unpredictable directions. So in conclusion, grids simply make sense and can give us confidence as designers to know that there is order and structure to our design. Also, grids are good if you have a strong idea initially for your layout to help you achieve your creative vision. When you have a clear idea in mind, you can choose the right grid to suit your approach. So what can we learn? Well, it's not always necessary to use a grid. Much design is created without one, but they can be very beneficial as a basis for your design. So in application, when you're designing posters or anything for that matter, be sure to consider using a grid as it can help you solve your layout problems. Also, when you look and observe other designs, ask yourself what sort of grid has been used? Is there a clear sense of structure? How have they used the grid in their design to achieve it? And how well does it work as part of the design? Well, I hope you enjoyed this design theory lesson. If you did, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified of more design lesson videos like this in future. Now this lesson is part of a bigger series on poster design and part of my poster design ebook. If you want to take a closer look at the examples I demonstrated in this video and learn more about poster design with tutorials on how to make a poster design and undertake poster design challenges, you can invest in the poster design ebook. Link is in the description. Now this video was created for all my members of the GDS Design School community. If you'd like to join the GDS Design School community where we chat about design, give each other feedback and where I set design challenges, you are all welcome to join for free. Again, link is in the description and I look forward to seeing you there. So until my next design lesson, unleash your creativity and I'll see you next time.